this is E.T., and this is the Reverend Thomas Burns. He went into the ministry long after he had been uh, retired from the sport of boxing. Tommy Burns was the heavyweight champion of the world. He took the title from Marvin Hart in 1906, and he lost it very famously to Jack Johnson. That was in December of 1908. Well, given the decades-long media interest in Jack Johnson, uh, I mean, I'm thinking of uh, the movie The Great White Hope, a book and TV series on PBS called Unforgivable Blackness, and then there were the numerous articles and NPR stories. Well, because of all these, we've seen only negative coverage of any of Jack Johnson's ring opponents. And I'm thinking of specifically James J. Jeffries, one of the greats, and the subject for today, Tommy Burns. First, let's take a look briefly at some of little known but interesting facts regarding Tommy Burns. Well, first off, his name was not Tommy Burns. It was Noah Brusso. Second fact, Burns, a.k.a. Tiny Tommy, was a very small man for a heavyweight fighter. For comparison, take a look at this. This is Yunta Nakatani. He's held the flyweight title since 2020. Correct me if I'm wrong. 112 pounds, that's about 51 kilos. He stands, Nakatani does, five feet seven. Same height as the heavyweight champion, Tommy Burns. Tommy usually fought, by the way, as a welterweight or middleweight. When he fought Jack Johnson, he was a very flabby 168. Johnson at the time was six feet two and weighed almost 200. Tommy Burns still reigns as the shortest heavyweight title holder ever. He also held, or still holds, many records after, what, a century and a couple of decades since he left boxing? For example, he's the only heavyweight champion to defend a title twice in one night. I know some of you are going to say, what about George Foreman? Yeah, Foreman did take on five opponents on one night. I think it was in, was it in 74? Correct me if I'm wrong. But George was not heavyweight champion then. Another interesting fact, Burns registered one of the fastest knockouts as a heavyweight champion. That's one minute and 28 seconds. I think, but I'm not sure, but I think that was faster than uh, Mohammed Ali's knockout of uh, Sonny Liston in the second fight. And I'm not saying that, that that knockout was legitimate. Well, another fact, Burns' as champion knocked out a record eight consecutive opponents as champion. Now, that's a record Larry Holmes tried to break. He came close. He said, I'm going to break Tommy Burns' famous record, but he did not. Another fact, Burns is considered even today by knowledgeable boxing fans as one of the best pound-for-pound pound fighters ever. And what else? Oh, Tommy Burns was the first champion fighter who competed at elite levels in sports other than boxing. I'm talking about baseball, lacrosse, hockey, American football, and soccer. He was a star player for three different hockey clubs, and that was at the same time. He competed successfully as a diver and swimmer. And as a speed skater, he was fantastic. At the age of 14, he'd already developed powerful legs. And he became one of the fastest skaters in Canada. He came in third. Now, remember, he's 14. At the 1895 Ontario Skating Championships. Then he had the nerve to challenge J.R. McCulloch. McCulloch was the world speed skate champion. Burns challenged him to a three-mile race, and Burns led in the race for two and a half miles. He did lose by one second. Well, the teen Tommy Burns performed at championship levels in the above-mentioned sports. His performance in lacrosse was even more impressive. 
Now, lacrosse was at the time the most popular game in Canada, and Burns or Nora Brusso, whatever you want to call him, was a Canadian resident. Basketball hadn't been invented. The National Hockey League did not yet exist. And the team, Tommy Burns, was famous for leading the best lacrosse teams in the world. This is before he took up professional boxing. Had he stayed in Canada, now this is my opinion, he could have become one of the greatest professional lacrosse and hockey players who ever lived. Burns saw boxing as more fun and lucrative, and he came into it by accident. I think it was in Detroit. Uh, he's with a bunch of his friends. Uh, they began to uh, chide him into uh, taking on a uh, black boxer. I think, I think the boxer was named Thornton. Well, Burns got into the ring. He had gotten into a lot of fights, street fights. So he gets into the ring and he knocks out the uh, boxer for a, uh, I think he got enough money to buy cigars for his friends. Well, he liked fighting, and if he can make money at it, why not? He continued to win until he's up against Marvin Hart, heavyweight champion of the world. Marvin Hart, who'd beaten Jack Johnson not long before. And he beat Marvin Hart, and he began cleaning up fighters after that, until he met Jack Johnson, and that was in Australia. And that's the story most of you know about. He became one of the richest ever, even richer than John L. Sullivan had been. Tommy Burns was worth about $500,000 when he retired. Now in 2022 dollars, that's about 16 and a half million. He had that at age 32. This paved the way for athletes, not just boxers, to make the millions they do today. And also, he showed athletes how to continue holding on to the money. He made very smart investments. Another fact, Tommy Burns helped revolutionize training methods, techniques that are used today by athletes around the world. And it's very different than it used to be. I'll give you an example. There was a boxer, Tom Cribb, 19th century, well-known in England and around the world. Here's how he trained and influenced others to do so. He would hike excessively, often 30 miles a day to get ready for his fights. Well, everybody knew about, it was in the sport, knew about Cribb, so they did what he did. Well, Burns did not. And he argued that long walks, yeah, could improve stamina, but were too monotonous and they caused people to get sloppy and they sapped the spirit as well as energy. So Burns developed his own revolutionary forms of training that eventually were copied. He insisted on making training varied and interesting. One example, tree climbing, swimming in ice cold rivers. Instead of very long hikes or jogging, he would sprint up hills, then walk a pretty brisk mile, then he sprinted uh, about 100 yards, then he would continue doing this for five miles. This is recognized today as best for power sports like boxing. He refused also to get up very early. Even today, you have uh, boxers who insist on being up before dawn. Instead, he said, I'm going to sleep till uh, later. He gets up at 8 o'clock in the morning, and he did not immediately go out and work out. He would eat a breakfast. Now, granted, a light one. An orange, two eggs, toast, tea, some salt. Now, this is during training. Then he did his road work after a rest. Then he went to the gym for a rub down, a shower, and then he'd have a light lunch, rest until three, and then he'd hit the gym for what he called serious work. He'd work his, his uh, core, leg race, races to right angles of the body. Then he did muscled sit-ups, slight bend in the knees with dumbbells in his hands. He did stretches after he was warmed up, not before. 
Then he would spar. Now listen to how Tommy Burns sparred. It wasn't for three minute rounds. It was for six minutes, intense minutes, because it was not with one sparring partner. It was with three who would spar with him for two minutes. Another fact, during a time of segregation, when promoters, managers, and politicians forbade white fighters to even train with non-white fighters, let alone fight them, Tommy Burns announced publicly, I'm going to take on all comers, regardless of race or religion. I draw no color line nor bar any man in the world. And he fought as a professional, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten blacks, uh, when the discrimination was there against Jews, he fought a Jew, he fought North American Indians. It didn't matter to Tommy. He employed two sparring partners who were black. He often socialized with black fighters. He formed a very close friendship with one. This caused a lot of flack for Tommy Burns. He lost the support of many of his fans for this. And he has been erased from boxing lore because of it. The final obliteration of his name, and it was big in the newspapers, the final obliteration came when he agreed to fight Jack Johnson in 1908. The white-owned press never forgave him for it. It was the ultimate crossing of the color line. I want to emphasize this color line was drawn not by the fighters, most of the guys who went in the ring wanted to fight anybody. It was the promoters, the mayors of towns where riots might break out. More recently, it's been Jack Johnson's supporters who resent Tommy Burns for several reasons, not the least of which include the denigrating racial taunts that Tommy directed at his black opponents. And it's true. He did use the worst taunts possible. Oh, one other fact. And Burns always sought opponents uh, bigger than he was, what he thought might be better. He did not like to punch down. To give you an example, in a lacrosse game, now remember, he's very young at the time, in his teens. He was hit by a young man named uh, Fred Taylor. Fred Taylor went on to become Fred Cyclone Taylor, one of the first of hockey's, not lacrosse's, but hockey's superstars. Well, as the story had it, the two hit in a game. They're both pretty young, but Taylor is smaller than even uh, Tommy Burns, known as Noah Russo at the time. Well, n both men landed on the ground because they hit each other. They both get up with their fists clenched, ready to go at it. But when Tommy saw the young 14-year-old Taylor, about Tommy Burns' age, but who was considerably smaller, then he, Tommy, or Bruso, gave the younger boy a nod, and then he took off down the field. That really sums up who Tommy Burns was. Well, that's it. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Type in your comments below. Do subscribe if you have not done so. Hit the bell icon. You'll be notified when I put up new uploads. And it's really important that you share the videos on other social media. Uh, that will encourage me to make more. That's it. Thanks.